today's topic is dental caries. Uh, dental caries is uh, derived from Latin word rot meaning decay. Caries is nothing but uh, it is a destruction of tooth. Okay, so today we are going to study what this is definition. Dental caries is actually a irreversible microbial destruction of teeth. It's irreversible because once once the caries process has started in teeth, then you cannot uh, re reverse it back to the normal. You can treat it, but you just can't. Uh, I mean, make it back to normal condition because once the, there is destruction of either the enamel or dentin, it's destructed. That's it. You can just repair it. Okay. So by definition. Dental caries is irreversible microbial disease of the calcified tissues of teeth characterized by demineralization of inorganic portion and the destruction of organic portion of the teeth. Both the inorganic and inorganic components are destructed. Caries uh, may occur in either in enamel or in dentin or the caries process will extend up to the pulp. So pulpal pathology may be seen. So what is the uh, first we will study the epidemiology of the dental caries. How far dental caries is prevalent or how it has uh, arise. Okay, in prehistoric man, if we take b during the mm, pre-neolithic period, that is the 12,000 BC period, uh, the skulls of uh, persons from them didn't show any form of caries. These anthropologic studies were carried out by von Lenhasek. Then the caries in prehistoric man was uh, relatively rare, but when the Neolithic period started. So in prehistoric man caries was rare, but brachycephalic cells from the Neolithic period that is the 12,000 to 3000 BC, they showed the presence of caries. Uh, the caries was mostly in the cervical regions of the teeth. So uh, dental caries the, that was absent in the pre-Neolithic period was uh, beginning to be noticed during the Neolithic period. So caries may be considered a disease of a modern civilization. So contemporary isolated population, suppose if you want to know uh, how the caries has arised, uh, if you see isolated population as studies were conducted in East Greenland, the native food, uh, the food, native food was prevalent everywhere except at few places called the trading port, only at that places imported food was available. So when studies were carried out, the caries rate was about 4.3% in the native uh, areas, but in the trading ports where imported food was available, caries rate was 43.2 percent. So diet has been attributed as a cause. Uh, so isolated populations uh, were caries free. So in modern society, by about 17th century, there was increased incidences of caries. The caries was beginning to be noticed in the interproximal or contact areas of the teeth because of retention of food in those areas. Previously, what happened was the uh, the diet habits of man were different. They were increase. Uh, they were more of fibrous food or plant uh, uh, origin food. So the teeth were mechanically cleansable. But as uh, as as the society has progressed or the industrialization has taken place, the diet has changed from rough diet to soft or soft diet. This soft diet is uh, not cleansable. Actually, they, they are retentive on the teeth, and they are uh, th this change in diet is uh, led to increase in caries incidence. If we come to the prevalence of caries, the caries has, is highest in the Western countries, and it is lowest in the Asian countries. This has been again attributed to industrialization. Uh, if we see the caries prevalence. The following factors affect the caries prevalence. If we see in races, in, in the same geographic conditions, same geographical conditions, the blacks have fewer caries incidences than the whites. Uh, then if we consider the age, caries lesions the, the, that result in cavitation, as we know that once the caries has occurred, it is like irreversible condition. So these are not irreversible with age. Suppose if you see a child by the age of 6 years, about 20 percent of uh, children were affected by caries. So the DMFT was about 0.5. DMFT index is nothing but these are the indices used to measure the caries incidence and prevalence. DMFT is decayed mist filled teeth index. 
okay the number of decayed teeth missed teeth filled teeth are counted and it is known as the tmft index by about age 12 years as the age is increasing 90% of teeth were affected by caries so by age 6 about 60% were affected and by age 12 about 90% were affected so there is a definite increase in the caries prevalence and the dmft was also approximately 5.5 then if we see the gender the caries experience in permanent dentition is more in females than in males so considering the eruption timings of permanent dentition females uh, show considerably earlier eruption of teeth than males so the increase in caries prevalence can be seen in females conversely if we see the deciduous dentition males have uh, greater caries prevalence familial uh, familial factor uh, if suppose siblings or individuals if if the same or or parents have higher caries incidence their children correspondingly have higher caries incidence or if the siblings are uh, caries immune individuals there is there, there are no such instances of caries then the they uh, generally exhibit low caries incidence the children of such parents exhibit low caries incidence current trend in caries incidence is by 17th century there was increase in caries then as the 18th and 19th century has come there is decrease in caries incidence so it has been attributed to a lot of factors like the water fluoridation programs were carried out there was increase in dental manpower and uh, education about the oral hygiene the patient started taking care of their teeth the first international conference on declining uh, caries prevalence was held at boston so currently the uh, the caries incidence are little bit lower compared to the 17th century values now we are studying the etiology of dental caries uh, actually dental caries is a dynamic process it has been attributed to multitude of factors uh, which are responsible for both the initiation and the progression of caries but as we are studying the history how i mean what what causative factor may cause the caries and there are many theories proposed uh, to describe the etiology of dental caries so we'll see one by one so how the authors have proposed like first is the legend of worms theory earlier uh, in uh, there was a ancient sumerian text that gave reference to this legend of worms theory according to this theory caries was uh, because of worm caries was caused because of worms Uh, this has been evident from the writings of author homer so homer made reference to caries uh, as a cause of toothache so this is nothing but the legend of worm theory then the endogenous theory it is also known as a humoral theory it has been advocated by the greek physicians according to these physicians the balance or imbalance in the humors there are four humors uh, there is the blood phlegm black and the yellow bile yellow bile the imbalance in these humors is responsible for ca causing caries and according to this theory caries is caused by internal action of acid and corroding humors so under the endogenous theory is the vital theory according to this theory tooth origin uh, caries originated from within the tooth like how bone gangrene arises from within the bone in the similar way decay arises from within the tooth itself so first it was attributed to worms then it was attributed to some interaction between the humors then then uh, it has been uh, known to arise from within itself or its own then now the exogenous theories so exogenous theory first is the chemical theory chemical theory it was proposed by palmley in 1820 according to this theory an unidentified chymal agent was responsible for causing the disease and palmley stated that dental caries affected only externally only the surface of the tooth there is no uh, internal action according to this theory it states that dental decay affects only externally this uh, theory has been further supported by robertson who actually showed that acid is produced because of the fermentation of food particles whatever food particles stuck to the outer surface of the teeth they produce the acid so this uh, this is nothing but the chemical theory next 
parasitic theory. For the first time, microorganisms were attributed for causing caries. According to this theory, in uh, 1843, Erdl, he removed, uh, he studied some uh, membrane which is removed from the covering of the teeth and he demonstrated the presence of parasites, filamentous parasites. Then, supporting that, other authors started uh, giving names for the parasites. They term, they gave the name denticole. Denticole meaning decay related organisms. Then, uh, this theory also stated that uh, though uh, previous theory stated that acids were produced by fermentation of food. Though acids may be produced, but parasitic theory states that organisms are only responsible for disintegration of enamel and dentin, that uh, these microorganisms are responsible for destruction of teeth. So, parasitic theory gives attribution only to the microorganisms. Next is the septic theory. It is proposed by Underwood and Miller. So, this theory also attributes uh, dental caries to acids. Acids capable of causing decalcification are actually proposed by bacteria. So, if we see the earlier theories, the parasitic theory states only microorganisms. Now, the septic theory states that acids are produced by bacteria only. Bacteria are the cause, but bacteria produce acids uh, which feed on the uh, organic fiber elements are present in the dentin and they, they bring about the dental caries. Then, so, uh, so, they, uh, so up till now uh, the, we have seen the theories, they state that okay, the dental caries is caused by some acids, some microorganisms. So, now we are going to study the chemical parasitic theory. It was proposed by Miller in 1884. Chemical parasitic theory is the most accepted theory. It is the uh, backbone of the current concepts of etiology of dental caries. It, uh, this theory is considered as the backbone of the knowledge of etiology of dental caries. It is also called as acidogenic theory. According to chemical parasitic theory, dental decay is considered as a chemical parasitic process. It occurs at two stages. Chemical parasitic process is that there is some chemical element involved and there are some organisms involved in it. So, uh, this uh, dental decay, it occurs at two stages. First, there will be the decalcification of enamel. So, when there is decalcification of enamel, destruction of teeth occurs. Second, for the decalcification of dentin, first there is dissolution of softened residue. Once the dentin, uh, the, once the softened residue dissolution occurs, then there is the decalcification of dentin. For the decalcification of enamel, two stages are not required. Just a similar single stage decalcification is enough for destruction. But for uh, decalcification of dentine, first the residue is softened, then it undergoes decalcification. Miller, Miller's chemical parasitic theory. So, Miller conducted a lot of experiments uh, during his theory. He studied that when bread, meat, sugar, they were incubated in vitro with saliva uh, for about 24 hours to 48 hours. They produce enough acid within the 48 hours which is responsible for decalcification of sound dentin. So, Miller's theory gives importance to three significant factors. They are the oral microorganisms because microorganisms are responsible for decalcification. Then carbohydrate, carbohydrate acts as a substrate. Acid, there is decalcification of enamel and dentin because of the acid. So, uh, role of oral microorganisms, role of carbohydrate and role of acid. These three uh, are involved in the process of caries, involved in caries process. So, there were few drawbacks in the theory of Miller's theory. According to Miller, only uh, just a single microorganism is not responsible for caries. There are a lot of microorganisms involved in causing caries. Uh, so, we have to study the oral microorganisms in detail. Then, the carbohydrate content also, it uh, differs. Uh, when, when, when the monosaccharide it is different, when polysaccharide it is different. We will study it later on. First, we will study the drawbacks of the theory. The, the predilection of certain specific sites on a tooth, why only few sites are showing caries and few sites are caries free. Why? 
initiation of smooth surface carries how does it occur this theory doesn't explain it and why few populations were caries free and does not explain the phenomena of arrested carry so miller was not able to explain these factors that's it sir. that's it